Let's do this. Who wants to demonstrate their task analysis? All right. She really wants a towel. We talked about this. Come on up. Do I just say it and somebody acts it out? Yeah, that's great. So pick someone who's not... Uh, I pick Fiona. Maybe. Uh, sure. Yeah, make Fiona do it. <laughs> um, I think you have to start by showing them what you say is the top of the frisbee and the bottom of the frisbee because otherwise they're not going to know whether to hold it this way or this way. So I said, this is the top where the angry bird is. Oh, I was going to say, you could even like put a sticker on it or something, like keep the red at the top or whatever. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Ooh, now Fiona, I'm so stand up. Stand up. Okay, stand up. <laughs> wow. So I'm going to say this is the top and this is the bottom of the frisbee. And I put a label on it so she can remember which is top and the top stays up. Brilliant. So then I say, pick up the frisbee with your thumb underneath. Oh, yeah, your thumb on the top of the frisbee and the rest of your fingers holding the frisbee underneath and the top stays up. Okay. So then I say, stand up with the, the same hole, because I said she had to pick it up, so she probably was picking it up off the ground. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm so nervous. I really want the towel. <laughs> I, just, I just need to see you do your best. That's all I okay. ask for. Um, <laughs> and I do workshops too, so it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> then, then I'd say, face the, face the wall, because I would pretend the wall was an open space. So face the wall, Fiona. And then I say, stand with your right foot forward and your left foot behind you. So your right foot is towards the wall and your left foot is away from the wall. And what other assistive equipment could you use to help with that step? Any ideas? Something Mark we talked about this morning? Yeah. The spot markers. Very good. Right. So, so I could put like, I could say, put your right foot and or if, if I needed to, I could even sticker her feet and say, put yellow foot on yellow circle. And then okay. I say, start with your arm across your bo body, frisbee in right hand, beside your left shoulder. Oh, that's pretty good. And so again, if left and right is a problem, sticker the kid. Right? And then lead him with your elbow, begin to throw the frisbee forward towards the wall, or in our case, it should really be an open space, extending your arm fully across your body towards the open space. Flick wrist forward when the arm is fully extended, releasing the frisbee at this point. Frisbee should roll off the top of your index finger, index finger pointing towards your target. Oh, yeah. Good job, Fiona. Hey, good work, guys. <laughs> yes, the towel is yours. Nice presentation, Tara. I like it. I would give Fiona a prize, but... She's our receptionist, so she already gets all the canned stuff. <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much. I hope that activity, uh, if nothing else, just gave you an appreciation for how hard it actually is to break down all of the sub-steps of a skill and how much language is involved in articulating each of those sub-steps. Like when you said, lead with your elbow, put your arm across your body, and at the end, flick your wrist and point your finger towards the wall. That is a lot of language for a lot of our kids to comprehend. But the fact you were able to break it down was good. But think about all those little steps, right? What's going to be the most effective way to be able to teach? Sometimes it's adding a visual cue. We talked about spot markers, stickering the feet, putting stickers on top of the bottom of the Frisbee. For some kids, you might not... It just might be so hard to come up with the right words or visual cues that you might decide, I'm just going to break down that step and show them on a video, right? All kinds of different ways to do it. I'm going to show them live. I'm going to add more physical assistance at that stage. How to hold the Frisbee might be a really good step just to do physical guidance, right? So it's, it's hardly ever just one strategy. It's usually the combination of strategies that are going to come together to have the most, you know, give you the most effective coaching experience. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna, I don't wanna steal your sheet. Hope that's okay. Okay, Okay. who had an idea about how they could use a weight card? Yes, my soccer coach at the back. 
Okay, so in in my soccer practice, there's a particular um, game that boys really love called the Indy 500, cool. where they all pretend they're race cars, and literally, I just get them to run around the gym, nice. and they do it really well with lots of enthusiasm. <laughs> However, it gets very dangerous because they get really super excited and usually ends up one of them bonking into another one, sliding on the floor, whatever it is. Of course. So my thought is, if they are in teams... Oh. So it's like, I don't know what they call it in race cars, but like if they have stagger to... Stagger start. Stagger start. Thank you. Um, the first boy does two laps and then hands the weight card off. Then, and like, then they know, like they're holding the card. They're holding like, oh, so excited. They're engaged whilst waiting. And then I think it would work. And then people probably wouldn't get injured because they'd have to slow down. I love to it. To hand the card, right? It's beautiful. It's like passing the baton. Yeah. The other thing you could try is we use these a lot. Go, stop, go, stop, which in a uh, race car game would be perfect. We have other ones that have like the lights, red, green, so you could really stand there and like give them the signal, right? We use these a lot in like uh, the game, go, go, stop. Mr. Wolf even, whatever, just adding that extra visual cue. The kids could hand it off like, hey, your turn to go, right? So yeah, very good, excellent. I assume Tara is hooking you up with something. Okay, well then, I'm gonna skip a few of these, okay? We're not gonna do every single one. Uh, someone tell me an idea they had about a countdown strip. Some sort of activity in their whatever, yes. I, well, I saw her first, sorry. Oh, you saw her first, okay, sorry Amy. Amy is from now on gonna select the people, yes. So I work with a kid who, has, who is high functioning and um, so he's in grade three and we do a running program at the school and he's not a big fan of running. <laughs> so for, um, I actually do this with him anyways. So for a countdown system, he has to do four laps. So it'd be like four laps, then count down three laps, two laps, one lap, finish reward. Beautiful, that's perfect. We use countdown strips sometimes for um, things like an obstacle course. So we set up obstacle courses in our skate program all the time. So that's where we draw on the ice and we tell the kids go forwards to here and then backwards and then go around this and we draw all over and they, they go through the course. And for some kids, the countdown is a really good way to structure that so that they know we're gonna go through the course three times and for each lap, then we take one off. So yeah, similar to that, very good running club. I love it, well that's awesome. Did you guys hear about the twins with autism who ran the New York City Marathon? Yeah? Some kids with autism, just like, you know, the spectrum of interests in autism is exactly the same of the spectrum of interests in any population. So that's what I mean about really be open-minded about the types of activities that your, your kid might like. Okay, uh, who had an idea about token boards? Did anyone, can anyone, um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, fight it out. Oh, okay. Um, what we use that is that um, when he has different chores, to, I mean, different tasks to learn. Yeah. So um, it's new. So to motivate him, we actually put uh, what the activity he would like to do next and yep. then put the token system one, two, three, and then you can have that uh, for like a, maybe free skating. That's what we can Beautiful. do. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Excellent. So it's one of those um, strategies that's really good to use to motivate kids who just aren't kind of naturally inclined to just jump in and participate with everything at the beginning. So if it's new, they can get their 10 points and then their free skate time at the end. Perfect. Remember the beautiful thing about token boards is that you can totally vary the activity for each of the 10 points that they're getting. I find a lot of kids really like when you call them points. Sometimes I call it like, then we'll see if we can level up because they're also into like the video games. So, you know, whatever works, right? Okay. Um, someone give me an example of how, how many prizes do you have left? Okay, beautiful. There's more t-shirts over there too. Someone tell me an example of how they think they could use a timer in their program. I keep seeing the middle here. We gotta get to that one. When doing, um Homework, or if they need to take a break, like a break yeah. from the activity, you need to take a break, and your break is for five seconds or whatever Good. your break is. 
Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we haven't talked about using the timer to time the break before. I guess we did a little bit with like the kid at soccer camp and his coloring. So some kids will ask for a break, but then we really want them to re-engage with what we're doing. And instead of just nagging them to re-engage, the timer works very well for some kids to just understand, yep, like we can have a two minute water break. Okay, I'm gonna set my timer when the timer goes off. It's time to come skate again, or it's time to come do this again. Yeah. Timers also, I mean, we do have some like dollar store timers that we distribute to our staff who want them, um, but you can use a stopwatch. You can use your iPhone. You don't have to have some fancy, uh, the visual timers work very, very well for some kids, but any timer can, can work in most situations. Someone tell me about some choices they can imagine offering in their program. Hi. So All right, Amy's picking. Um, I was thinking of choices in the fact, um, one of the things I do is work on a home team. Okay. And so even just having uh, all the activities for the day and having uh, the child choose which order yep. all the activities in, so not just between two choices, but maybe even just planning out, sure. having the opportunity to plan that schedule. Good, very good. And we've done that in our swim program. So we've had a couple of, um, I remember one parent in particular said that was a strategy that they used on their home team. And when they presented it that way, there were no problems. So we thought, okay, we can do the exact same thing at swimming. There's no reason why not. It's a one-to-one -one program. We can, it doesn't matter if we let the kid totally choose the sequence. So yeah, it worked very well. We actually had her participate in writing her schedule. We used those um, weird erasable pencil slash crayon type things. I think they're called China markers, which I find a really weird name, but there you go. So we have boards that you can erase them. They actually work in a pool, as opposed to like a whiteboard or a chalkboard, not so good in a pool. So sometimes you have to find the right medium for different settings. So very good, that's nice. That's a nice example of a good choice. What are we at, Tara, where are you? Three. Um, okay, so my favorite one is visual cues. Did anyone have any? Ah, I see one. Did anyone have any creative ideas about visual cues they could have in their program? Oh, there's some people who are like, ah, eh, maybe, uh, I don't know. I think this is, people I'm not kind sure. People are uncertain, I don't know. I see one maybe here, one here, one here. Okay, where was the one over here? Or no, right here. Got it over your arm, who was it? Wait. <laughs> Thanks. I work with the uh, Special Olympic athletes cool. in the golf program. Awesome. And uh, for our visual cues, what we use is we use buckets for target practice. Very nice. Uh, and flags for distance control. Yep. Um, it also teaches that the driver, with visual pictures of the driver, uh, versus the irons versus the putter, and then we would review and stuff like that. So we would use the cues and stuff. So which club would you use for a longer distance? Nice. Show the three pictures and the athletes would then uh, point out which ones would be used. Awesome, cool, golf program, that sounds like fun. Um, yeah, and like just the, the idea of targets, we use that so much, like uh, whether it's you know basketball, passing, and trying to pass at a target, put a target up on the wall, golf, trying to hit into a bucket or just aim that distance, perfect. Remember in swimming, we had the one where we were trying to get the kid to glide for further, so they held out the hoop. Okay, you gotta get at least this far, same idea with your flags in the golf. So, awesome. Good visual cues. Yay. Okay, we're going to do one more. Um, oh, here's an easy one. Who wants to tell me some good first thens for their program? You have to give me at least two. Yeah, like first this, then that, first this, then that. It's easy. Um, well, I'm in a skating program uh, with Canucks Autism Network, and I know there's one um, little guy in particular that I work with, and basically he really, really likes, um, I don't know how to call it, but sh like making snow with his skate. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he like he loves that, and like every time I look over, he's doing that, right? <laughs> so um, basically, if we're saying doing an obstacle course or yep. something along those lines, I always say, okay, we're gonna first do the obstacle course, then we can do some snow, or like nice. however you say it. But um, so basically just to kind of have that incentive and then he races through the obstacle course like nothing and then goes off and plows some snow. So he loves that. Beautiful. And um, for another one, I just thought of that one. But Okay, that's good. Um. I'll give it to you. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's nice. So the then doesn't always have to be some crazy, 
Like I think sometimes people think it has to be some big reward. No, it can just be like something that's natural that you can easily deliver in that setting that really fits. No problem, not a huge, you know, not a huge deal. So making snow, if that's what the kid likes, that's a perfect then. Um, swim programs, often it's, they like, we have a little bit of toys that we have in every setting. Lots of kids choose the toys. Lots of kids choose the slide. Some kids just want to jump in the water. Not a big deal, something that we can spend maybe one, two minutes on kind of thing, have a little bit of fun, fun is always good, and then we can get back to some of the other skill-based activities. Lovely, everyone, you've done very well.